Knowing what's broken is the first step to winning league games. You could even say some games are decided more by draft than the gameplay itself. It can be hard to figure out what's actually good sometimes, but that's where I come in. I'm Crumbs and our topic for today is the 15 most broken champions on patch 13.2. Before we get started, I just want to say this list is not in any particular order. It's just a list of the champions that we predict will be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. And one last thing before we jump into the video, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24 seven, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, let's get on with the list. Of course, with all the changes headed her way, the first champion we'll be talking about is Annie. Annie's biggest strength is bursting down squishy champions, and with so many super tanky champions being played right now, it can be hard to find targets in fights. Tibbers has a fire aura that does damage over time, but he's so squishy that that doesn't actually mean much. But with 13.2, they're making Tibbers a lot beefier, as well as giving him some more movement speed and giving Annie's shield a much bigger AP ratio. This should go a pretty long way for her, opening up burn style builds that allow you to put out a really good amount of damage in extended fights. Another big change is to the damage reflection on her shield. It can only reflect damage once, but the damage it deals is going way up and can now be procced by abilities, not just autos. This will make it feel like a much more meaningful ability in trades rather than just a minor defensive cooldown. The second champion we'll be talking about that's going to be a bit overbearing this patch is Samira. She's already been one of the hardest champions to deal with in the bot lane with her nearing a 30% ban rate. And with all the AD carry item buffs this patch, it's only going to get even harder. While we haven't been able to test anything yet, being able to go Infinity Edge second is probably gonna be a huge damage spike for AD carries that don't need to go a Zeal item. And Samira is a prime example of that. Another change she'll be really enjoying is the change to Bloodthirster. While it's losing a bit of lifesteal, the huge buff to its shield means you'll have way more time to stack up your passive and get an ultimate off, which can definitely make a big difference in which way a fight goes. Caitlyn is another champion that's been super popular lately, with her being both picked and banned more than 20% of the time. Despite that, Riot is buffing her this patch. It's not a huge buff, just a bit of mana per level. But when a champion is already one of the highest presents in the role, any buff is silly. She's also another champion that will benefit quite a lot from the item changes, since IE second on her will be a super strong option when against really squishy enemies. The next entry we have is Jax. He's one of those champions where statistically, he doesn't seem all that crazy. He's pretty high up there in the pick and ban section, but his win rate is just above average. But that win rate is pretty deceiving. A good Jax can easily take over a game if he doesn't get shut down early. It's just a matter of learning the early game matchups. If you master that and can reliably make it to the mid game without being too behind, you'll become a 1v9 machine. But not every champion on this list is about solo carrying games. In fact, with Zac, team play is everything. Zac is one of the very best abusers of Radiant Virtue at the moment, and with Riot basically saying they're okay with how strong the item is, he'll continue to be an OP to your pick. This is a special case of a champion that almost everyone can abuse. Zac is good in literally every role other than AD carry, so hop on the free train and abuse this pick. When Riot gave out big buffs to both Seraph's Embrace and Rod of Ages on 13.1, they were addressing the issue that not very many champions built either item, and those that did tended to not do so well. But buffing two items that go so well together is risky, especially when there's one champion in particular who was already doing really well. We already considered Anivia S tier before getting her two core items buffed. Now she's crazy good, to the point that I wish we had something about the OP tier to put her in. Super OP. Another mid laner that will be getting a similar treatment this patch is Tristana. Trist is a pick that we try to push on you guys a lot. She has some of the best laning of any champions in the game, with all in potential as early as level 2. With her super fast shoving, in games where your laner respects your damage, you're easily able to shove waves and either go for plates or look to roam to other lanes. 
The really nice thing about Triss is that despite her being really strong early, she doesn't fall off hard like a lot of lane bullies. In fact, her scaling range, self peel, and resetting jump make her a very self-sufficient carry in later fights, so you're fine with a game that goes late. Gangplank may be getting nerfed this patch, but he makes the list too. The reason is simple. The entire reason Gangplank has become so broken is that he does way too well with Navori. Now that you're able to build it second, he's hitting his biggest power spike even earlier. Unless Gangplank gets some huge nerfs that absolutely gut his early game, a good player is always going to have a pretty big impact. Speaking of Navori abusers, Kai'Sa also belongs on this list. Kai'Sa has pretty much always been a super popular pick. The ability to flex her build to include different items is something that has always made her a bit broken. I mean, what other AD carry had the luxury of being able to build both Mercurial Scimitar and Zhonya's at the same time? Though towards the end of Season 12, she was seeming kind of average. Not bad, but just not that great. But the little rework Navori got definitely changed that. Now she's looking as powerful as she did in earlier seasons, if not even better. The bonus damage on abilities is nice, but what's really broken is how quickly it resets your cooldowns. Being able to spam Kai'Sa's E in fights gives you perma attack speed increase while also allowing you to stealth again and again to dodge the enemy. We heavily underestimated just how good Zaya would be with her 13.1 buffs. We thought such a seemingly small buff to her base attack speed and attack speed ratio was a step in the right direction, but that she'd still be kind of mid. Instead, she's become one of the highest win rate AD carries in the game, and with Navori being a viable second item now, she'll just be getting better. If you thought we were done with Broken Marksman, you'd be wrong. There's still room for one more on this list. I mean, AD carries are already a pretty strong class, so with a patch aimed at buffing them, obviously there's going to be a lot on the list of Broken Champions. The last one we'll be talking about today is Draven. Like most of the other AD carries we talked about before, he's another one that will benefit a lot from the item changes this patch. First of all, being able to go Infinity Edge second on him is huge. You'll literally be killing squishy opponents in three hits once you hit your two item spike. The Bloodthirster change is also nice. Draven already heals a ton per auto, so he won't really miss the 3% lifesteal. It's a worthwhile trade for a bigger shield to ensure you aren't getting burst down before you even get any hits off. As I've already pointed out, AD carries haven't exactly been weak lately. In fact, in the higher ranks, everyone already knows that playing around bot lane is the best way to try and win games. With this patch heavily buffing AD carries, I personally think Riot is sort of missing the mark. What do you think about role balance? How about this? Go down to the comments and list the roles in order from weakest to strongest. Feel free to explain your rankings if you'd like. Okay, let's get back on topic, shall we? Finally, getting away from AD carries, the next champion we'll be talking about is Silas. Statistically, Silas is not doing so well. He's definitely extremely popular, being picked a ton in the jungle and quite a bit in the mid lane. Despite that, his win rate is in the red. That said, that is not an indication of how strong Silas is. Silas is actually a pretty hard champion to use well. His kit may seem easy to pick up and use, but masterful comboing as well as smart ultimate usage is needed to make the most of him. That's why he's a pick that tends to do so well in higher ranks and pro play. So while you may get mixed results at first, if you put in the time to learn him well, he can easily become an OP tier pick just for you. Amumu makes this list for both his jungling and support skills. While he's really strong in both roles, his identity in each one is pretty different. As a jungler, Amumu's build is really aggressive. He builds four damage-oriented items in Demonic Embrace, Jack Show, Sunfire, and Abyssal Mask, along with Sork Shoes, so he's simultaneously a beefy tank and a carry himself. As a support, you don't have the money for a build like that, so you go for more utility via Even Shroud and Zhonya's. Whichever role you're playing him in, his disgustingly strong team fighting allows you to have a huge impact in mid to late game 5v5s. If there's one champion that can give Amumu a run for his money in terms of team fighting power, it's gotta be Fiddlesticks. We've talked about how broken he is for not just months, but multiple seasons in a row now. Fiddlesticks' kit is pretty hard to balance. If he's undertuned, he's gonna be bad. And anytime he's not, he's absolute free low. You clear your camps, ult when it's up, then rinse and repeat. As long as you're targeting the right opponents with your ultimates, you really can't mess him up. As long as the game is decently intact, once the laning phase ends, there's a very, very strong chance that you can carry with just a few good ultimates. Finishing off our list, we've got Karma. 
Prior to this preseason, we've considered Karma one of the worst enchanters in the game, but Radiant Virtue has completely changed that. Now, instead of falling off at 15 minutes, Karma scales insanely well, solely because of this incredibly overtuned item. Whether you play her mid or support, you should 100% be building this and looking to death ball the second landing phase is over. You can thank me for the free LP later. And that's gonna wrap things up for our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 13.2. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on any of our content like this. And remember to let us know how strong you think each role is down in the comment section below. One last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP gods smile down upon you.